Number one. I went on vacation with my family to attend a family reunion in another state. Now, my family is Asian, and when gathered, forms a cluster of about twenty loud Asian people, who literally never leave each other's sides for the duration of our reunions. We always travel in herds, and we are always secure in our obnoxious caravans of watchful Vietnamese paranoids. So, of all times to encounter a creep, this was the last place I have expected to feel unsafe. Last night, we went to a Chinese buffet that was jam-packed with people, and at one point in the evening, I got up to use the restroom. I had already used the restroom when we first arrived at the restaurant to wash my hands. So, even though it was in the very back corner of the buffet, I knew the main bathroom door was propped open, so I didn't think anything of it. I walked down the corridor to use the restroom and noticed a short but extremely muscular Latino guy, sort of hovering the hallways. I passed him and he began to walk behind me. Again, I thought nothing of it, but. As I approached the women's bathroom, I saw that there was no men's bathroom in that corridor. So, why was this guy seemingly trailing me? The women's door was still propped open, however. So, avoiding eye contact, I scuttled in with relief, thinking that this was the end of it. In the span of the second it took to walk from the open doorway to the very back stall, I knew two things. One, there was no one else in the bathroom. There were only two stalls, and the other one was empty. Two, the man from the hallway had followed me into the bathroom, and just as I shut and locked my stall door, he closed the bathroom door behind him. Now I'm panicking. I stand there behind my stall door and stare at him through the crack in the door. He stands there by the sinks, quietly staring right back at me. Then he turns and turns the lock on the door. At this point, I back away from the stall because I'm convinced he's going to come underneath it any moment. I text my oldest cousin and tell him to get a manager and come to the restroom now, because I'm trapped in the bathroom with some man. Then I dial nine one one and with the phone sandwiched between my ear and shoulder, I pick up the lid off the toilet bowl to defend myself in case the guy tried to crawl under the stall. The phone starts to ring. At this point, neither the man nor I have said a word. I should have done something like said I was calling nine one one or something, but honestly, I was too petrified to even speak, which I'm kicking myself over. I should have started screaming, but I had this subconscious paralyzing fear that it would propel him into action or something. So I just stand there, holding the toilet lid. While watching him through the crack in the door, suddenly I can hear my cousin outside banging on the door and shouting. He's telling some staff member from the restaurant that the door is locked, and I can hear the jingling of keys. This was really old, cheap door, like an airplane bathroom door. This is enough to freak the man out, because he suddenly turns, unlocks the door, and bolts out of the restaurant. My cousin and I tell the owner of the restaurant, but he honestly doesn't seem to give any shits, and acted like we were hassling him because nothing had really happened. He just waved us off, impatiently saying, "I got it, I got it." I'm still freaked out by that encounter. It's chilling to think about how bad things could have happened in the middle of the most crowded, loudest restaurant imaginable, with your family just a few feet from you. Telling the story now, it seems improbable that someone wouldn't have come in or would have heard me, but I was so scared I didn't think I could have even screamed. Thank God I brought my phone with me because everyone texts while they pee. Anyway, the moral of the story is: don't let your guard down, even in the most public of places. One shut door can turn the most innocuous, crowded place into a room of total creepiness and fear. Number two. So I've lurked on this page for a while, and I finally decided to share a pretty terrifying experience that happened to me about seven years ago, when I was fourteen years old. I used to live in a pretty shitty area and went to a bad high school too, so every place my friends and I used to hang out was pretty seedy. There were gangs, the occasional drive-by shooting, all that kind of stuff. 
We were all used to it though, and since we pretty much avoided that kind of scene, we weren't targets for any violence and were allowed to go wherever as long as we stuck together in a pack of three or more. Anyway, my friends and I made plans to go to the movies like we often did on weekends. It was a few hours out of the house, fun, relatively cheap, and we got snacks too. So, we did this pretty frequently. We often went to this one shady movie theater that was literally on the outskirts of town, which was barely in business and had horrible staff, mostly because they'd license to whatever movies we wanted, regardless of rating. So, it was me and about five other people, and once we got there, we stocked up on snacks, soda, and candy. Before long, I had to pee really, really badly, but my friends wouldn't accompany me to the bathroom, so I decided to go alone. The movie theatre was really, really shitty. The floors were covered in trash, and there was maybe one employee working at the moment as far as I could see. The employee was obviously there because their parents were forcing them to, because they hardly were over 16 and looked really bored, and also busy listening to her MP3 player and texting on her LG chocolate. I walked into the corridor that led to the bathrooms, and entered the girls' bathroom. At first, I thought it was empty, which made me both relieved and creeped out. Relieved because I was an awkward child who hated acknowledging people. Creeped out because it was a pretty big, dirty bathroom that echoed, and you always felt like someone was watching you. There were about six stalls, and the first section of the bathroom was your standard mirror and sink combo. And then there was a turn, and you had two sets of three stalls facing each other. I entered the very closest to the door, so I could get the hell out of there as soon as I was done peeing. But I found that the ta- But I found that the toilet was covered in feces, and what appeared to be period blood. The next toilet was obviously encrusted in dirt, and the third, the furthest inward, was the cleanest. And I stepped inside and started doing my business. That was when I heard the giggling. Low, steady, and batshit insane giggling. I froze. I wasn't sure where it was coming from, but my blood literally felt like it had turned to ice. The giggling was slowly growing louder, more to a sort of cackle now, and I was freaked the fuck out. I had no idea what to do, so I sat there when I should have ran. The door across from mine clicked open and I saw a pair of shoes shuffling over. I prayed silently they would ignore me and continue to the door, but they didn't. They literally walked over to my door, slowly and purposely menacingly, and then stopped, so that whoever those feet belonged to was facing my door head on, probably with their nose touching the door. More laughing. I thought for a moment I'd throw up. I looked at the shoes. For a second, I felt relieved because they were Mary Jane type shoes over a pair of white socks and I thought maybe it was a little kid. But when I noticed the size easily in adult size, I felt my stomach sink. The laughter was also deranged and didn't sound like a little kid's. I was paralyzed in terror. The person began scratching on the door, laughing hysterically and I wiped myself and lifted my knees to my chest, staring at the shoes. They started getting onto their knees, and I felt full-fledged panic. They were going to try and crawl under the stall. On the floor, I saw a little frilly pink dress, about knee length, and a flash of long, greasy grey hair. Then, a hand reached under the stall. I was breathing heavy and crying at this point, unsure of what to do since I was pretty much trapped. I texted my friends a bunch of times, begging for them to come and help me, but I assumed their phones were off, since I also tried calling them and nothing happened. The hands were long, veiny, and literally covered in burn scars and long shiny cuts that had obviously been stitched in a botched job. In a stroke of bravery, I stuck out my foot and stomped the shit out of one of their hands. I was wearing a pair of clunky boots that used to be popular, so it must have really hurt. Their hands retreated from under the stall, and all I could hear was muttering. 
I wasn't what to do at this point, so I just stood there, waiting. Then, suddenly, in a completely sober, sane-sounding voice, this creepy-ass old lady voice just said, Open the fucking door! I screamed at the top of my lungs, and she literally started saying the creepiest shit ever, no longer weird or crazy sounding. Eventually, I heard the bathroom door open, and she immediately stopped and retreated back to what I assumed to be a bathroom stall. When I exited the stall, I saw the young girl who was working at the front desk looking concerned. At this point, I had been in the bathroom for maybe 15 minutes. She told me she heard screaming and I rushed her out of the bathroom before I could tell her what happened. She was thoroughly freaked out and went into the back room for a minute where she was getting her manager I assumed. Another young looking guy, but slightly older, came out and went into the girl's bathroom, knocking on the walls and announcing that whoever was there would need to leave. Upon investigating further, he found all the stalls were empty, so we assumed that when I went with the girl to get her manager, whoever was harassing me escaped the bathroom. It was pretty traumatic, and when I got back to my friends, they were concerned about where I'd been. After I told them what happened, we left without finishing the movie. We never went to that theatre again. My parents wanted to contact the police, but I didn't, so that never happened. To this day, when I go to a movie theatre bathroom, I force one of my friends to accompany me to the bathroom. Number 3 Before I get to the story, I'm a young adult female who is diagnosed with psychotic depression and anxiety disorder. I had a rocky childhood and my high school years were spent doing everything to escape my home. I volunteer at a homeless shelter every other weekend when I can. The small town I live in provides very little for the homeless population and I feel like if I didn't do it, I wouldn't have anything to provide for society. It feels sort of selfish, really, but I've never considered myself a good person. Some of the folks there are extremely polite and easy to talk to, charming even. I've made friends with a handful of people that go through, watch them get back onto their feet as well, but there's always that crowd. The druggies, the crazies, the ones who have lived out in the woods for too long, and the wayward ramblings and the eyes that settle right into the uncanny valley. I make it my personal mission to avoid all these people at all costs. It was a Saturday night in August, somewhere around 8 o'clock. Usually, the homeless centre closes up around 6, but during the summer it stays open later to accommodate for the volunteers still in school. I was helping two fellow volunteers, one guy my age and a girl in her senior year of high school, to clean up in the kitchen. I have this anxiety about going to the bathroom in public places, not over cleanliness or anything, it's just one of my weird triggers. Having said that, I hadn't used the restroom since I had left my apartment at 10 o'clock this morning, so you could guess my urgency. Despite my anxiety, I excused myself and made a beeline for the ladies' room. Now, a bit of explanation. The centre is one building split up into separate rooms. To get to the bathroom, you had to walk out of the kitchen, a small room tucked away in a bigger room, and through the door of that room into a hallway. The hallway was full of doors into the other rooms, and we like to call it the hub. Then, you had to walk down the hub to the very end. The ladies was the last door on the right, and the men's was the last door on the left. You open the door to the ladies, and you're met with a long hallway. Directly at the end of the hallway were three dingy sinks, two soap dispensers between them, and a mirror above each one. Directly besides those, there were four bathroom stalls, the very last on the left side being the biggest, meant for the disabled. So I did just that. The ladies' room was totally empty from what I could see, but I noticed something strange right off the bat. The lights were motion activated, so when you open the door, they flicker on. They were already on when I came in. Of course, this wasn't completely strange, all things considered. It was a public bathroom, of course, and there were bound to be other people using it. 
I scolded myself for my anxiety and began to walk towards the stalls. The largest one at the very end was closed and locked. And last I checked, me and the other two volunteers were the only ones here. By now, my anxiety was slowly turning into fear, so I crept for the stall furthest away from that one. The lock was busted. I moved onto the one beside it, and go figure the lock was also busted. The only one left was the one directly beside the occupied stall. I did not want, by any means, to use the goddamn stall, but fear be damned, my bladder was full and currently screaming at me to grow some lady balls and just piss already. As quickly as I could, I slid into the stall and went about my business. As soon as the uh, flow began, I could have sworn I heard something. It was a very subtle, shifting noise, as in clothes ruffling. I finished peeing and made for the toilet paper. By now, the feeling of discomfort had only tripled, and my only want was to get out of that stall. I glanced up for only a moment, as if to check and see if someone was, I don't know, peeking over the stall, then looked down so as to stand up and pull up my pants. There was someone there, staring at me from the floor. It was one of the crazies that came into the homeless shelter. I recognized him, because he always used to compliment my dyed purple hair. I let out a scream, kicking open the stall door and making a beeline for the exit, pulling my pants up as I went. And, as weird as it sounds, I could have sworn I heard, slurping behind me, like a dog drinking from a toilet bowl. I stopped, volunteering at the shelter after that night. Fuck it, if I don't have any worthwhile contributions, I'm okay with that. So long as I never have to see someone looking back at me while I'm using the bathroom ever again. Number 4 I'm a 23 year old male in Florida, fairly introverted, hardly ever get out of the house. This encounter happened a few months ago. It was about 12am and I was getting a bit stir crazy and needed to get out of the house and just chill with someone. So, I texted a special lady friend of mine. We made plans to do our normal routine of hanging out at this nice secluded park. I went and picked her up and we drove to our spot and spent a couple of hours just chatting about anything and everything. Then she got hungry, so we decided to hop in the car and drive down the road a bit to McDonald's. Hooray for 24-7 fast food. This is where things started getting weird. We arrived at McDonald's and went inside instead of the drive through She ordered her food while I went into the restroom to wash my hands. A bit of a neat freak. I really wish I hadn't gone to the restroom that night. As I walked into the restroom, I saw this guy standing at one of those heated dryer things. Alright, not too weird, but then I noticed that he was kind of hunched over at it and wasn't moving. Whatever, I ignore him. I wash my hands and realize that he's standing at the only dryer in the place. The damn paper towels are also empty, so I awkwardly tried to ask the guy if he was done using the dryer. He didn't respond. Thoroughly creeped out, I just walk out and dry my hands on my shirt. I get out of the restroom and find my friend and we sit down at the table to eat. Maybe 20 minutes go by and we're about to head back out to the car to go back to our spot. Well, my friend had to use the restroom, so I figured I might as well also. I mean, surely the guy has to be done by now, right? Wrong. That guy is still standing at the dryer, mumbling something to himself now. I go into a stall and take a leak, and can hear him hitting the barn on the dryer over and over again. I wash my hands again and don't even attempt to get to the dryer. But then, the guy moves as I'm trying to walk past him. He steps back right in my path and just looks at me. I notice he's around my age. He just stares at me and says, Excuse me? Uh, okay. I put my head down, quickly say, Pardon me, and rush around him to get out of the bathroom. 
Thirty seconds later, as I'm waiting for my friend to get out of the ladies' restroom, the guy walks out. He just sits down at a table near me and is just staring straight at me. My friend walks out and notices the creep just eyeballing me. She then jokingly asks, Make a new friend in there? I just shake my head at her and try to lead her out to the car without making it obvious that I'm wanting to run away from this guy. Then he does the weirdest thing. He just starts cackling. Like a madman. I mean, straight up joker laugh. I'm thinking to myself, oh shit, crazy druggy dude is gonna do something fucked up here. Then he just stops suddenly, looks down at my feet and says, Nice shoes, O-Series? O-Series is a brand of shoe by the way. I manage to mutter, oh thanks, and quickly walk away out to the car. As my friend and I are getting into the car, we notice the guy staring at me from inside McDonald's, just straight up eyeballing me, death stare. Then, he stands up and starts booking it towards us. He wasn't running, but he was like speed walking. He bursts through both doors of McDonald's and starts coming right at us. And now, he looks angry. I pulled out of the parking lot so fast. And it's a damn good thing the roads were empty. My friend and I went back to our spot and hang out some more time. Every car that we saw in the distance... I kept freaking out expecting it to be the weird guy following us. My friend just teased me about it the entire night and still teases me about it to this day about how I made friends with a creeper in the bathroom who liked my shoes. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I hope you enjoyed listening through that. If you did, please slap a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to be notified of future uploads? If you have a story you want me to narrate, please send it to my email in the description box. Once again, thanks a lot for listening.